I play Lally Weymouth, uh, Catherine Graham's daughter, and she was a bit of a feminist in my scenes in the film. Y you get a sense that she could challenge her mother a bit, a bit, um, uh, and you know had a bit of a fiery personality at times, which is great. But ultimately, is a is a supportive presence to her mother. To prepare, I, I more than anything, I used Catherine Graham's autobiography, Personal History, as like my Bible in preparing, just because I didn't know much about the Graham family um, or the Pentagon Papers when I first signed on, and so it was really something I needed to research. And the book is incredibly candid, and it was so interesting to read, especially about uh, Kay Graham's insecurity as she was taking on the position of publisher at The Post. I think it's such a timely film and I, I hope that people are reminded of the importance of a free press and, and the First Amendment and, and inspired to defend it now more than ever. But also I hope that they just enjoy it. It's such an exciting, fast-paced movie. I, I think people will be moved by it, especially by Meryl's performance and Tom's. I, you know, I just hope they enjoy it. It's a real feminist story, and that this is an important time for that as well. Especially, you know, we're watching Catherine Graham in this film come into her own. She's already in a position of power, but she doesn't trust herself in that position. So it's a great story of, of, of a woman learning to own her power. I think it's about everything that's going on in the world right now. I think the movie you know, would have stood on its own. It would have been fine if we made the movie last year. It still would have meant something. I think today it means more. We had the greatest casting director, Ellen Lewis, who helped us really get the inspiration behind all of these characters. I mean, obviously Meryl and Tom, but every other cast member in this cast is truly incredible. Some of the best from TV and film. We're at the museum in Washington, D.C. They're going to show the premiere, the world premiere of The Post, a film by Steven Spielberg. I play Ben Bagdikian, uh, based on a real man, same name, uh, who was the guy who hunted down the Pentagon Papers for The Washington Post. The government had paid for a, a report about Vietnam, and it was a long-term report. It cost a lot of money and it was very thorough and very long and it basically said on every other page that Vietnam was not winnable in a uh, traditional sense. It was a great experience to work with Steven Spielberg and Tom Hanks and Meryl Streep. It was intimidating as you can imagine every day and I'm still intimidated and I loved it. And being around Steven Spielberg was a joy that I'll never forget. If you're an adult who wants to see a fun, smart movie, uh, really played well, you should go see this one. This character is a composite of uh, what Kay was up against in terms of, I think, you know, legitimately defensible business interests. Uh, the Post has to survive as a paper or there's no journalism getting done. And part of Kay's uh, problem in making what turned out to be the most important decision in arguably in the history of journalism, um, uh, she was risking the, uh, the paper, uh, you know, the entire enterprise. For 200 years our country dismissed the talents of half of the people in this country and we are still falling far short in terms of empowering women. You know, everybody wants to know was it scary? Yeah. It, oh my god when you walk in there the first day and you hear a little camera hum and you're looking at Meryl Streep and Steven Spielberg's <laughs> action it's yes it's scary but I, I can't emphasize with Tom, with Merrill, with Steven, immediately the ice was broken. They have the opposite of the sense of entitlement 
uh, this, even the sense that they know what they're doing. It really reminded, it's why they're so good. They are constantly wanting to live up to the material. And that was really, truly inspiring. I play Mae Greenfield, who is actually very early in her tenure in the film. She went on to be very good friends with Kay Graham and to win a Pulitzer Prize for her editorial work. But um, this film's not about her, so she's not in it very much. I play Fritz Beebe, who was the chairman of the board of the Washington Post Company during this time and a close advisor of Kay Graham's. I think there's a real sense of pride in, in what, it, what it means to truly be an American. I, I mean, I certainly feel that kind of swell of citizenship watching a movie like this, how important it is to be uh, a member of a free society and that we have to stay vigilant in order to, to have that continue to be true. It is a patriotic film and it's an optimistic film in the way that only Stephen can tell this story and I think we need that story right now when some of us are feeling so um, out of control. Well, Ellen Lewis, I mean, she just blew it out of the park. Um, casting was extremely important. You know, this is a character-based film. Um, it, it's driven by the performances in a large way. And we had, you know, I think, like less than 10 weeks to cast the film. And she put all of Steven's number one choices in it. When I read Liz's script for the first time, the reason I was so excited to jump on board, even though I'd just been in the world of journalism, was it's such a compelling story. Kay's journey is so compelling. It's such a great character story, and what, what a wonderful narrative of a woman finding her voice. When a free press is, uh, is threatened, as it seems to be right now, I think it's important to remember why, as Democrats and as Republicans, in fact, as Americans, we all need a strong free press to, uh, to uphold our democracy. This is not a, a liberal movie or a conservative movie. This is an American movie. Meryl is Meryl, and so you expect the best. And we still, you know, the first time both of us watched it, we were just so stunned by how amazing she is. And, and Tom on set would surprise us every day. And, you know, we have an incredible ensemble of, of actors that we were so lucky to work with. And so it was, I think people will be, uh, well, it's a lot of fun. So I think they'll have fun with it. Tonight we're fortunate to be having the premiere of The Post in Washington, D.C., the, uh, the actual place where it all took place in 1971. I play the part of Daniel Ellsberg, rather, sm although small, pivotal uh, role in this film as he instigates the entire thing um, and even leads to Watergate. So I was, I was lucky and more so honored to, to play the part of such a man. Stephen, to me, has all these films that are milestones in my life, and all of a sudden he's next to the camera going, action, and it's like acting in front of God. I knew very little about them. I knew, obviously, Watergate, um, but the sort of run-up to that, which I was completely unaware of with the Pentagon Papers, was uh, uh, a revelation to me, and, and one that I'm glad is, is having a spotlight shed on it. I hope that a greater audience will realize how the press is protected in this country and how rare and how much of a privilege that is and how it should be upheld, respected and protected. I play Tony Bradley, Tom Hanks' wife. Uh, he plays Ben Bradley. And uh, how I prepared was Amy Pascal gave me a giant parcel of uh, literature that I was able to, in research materials. There's not uh, as much material about Tony uh, on the internet and to scour, uh, to inhale, uh, but I did as much as I could. It's about a powerful rise of a, of a woman and also about uh, honoring uh, our First Amendment, uh, First Amendment fundamental rights. Um, so the combination of those two to me is is a real winner. I hope that they learn a little bit about our country's history and how uh, far we have traveled and how far we have yet to go and it's going to take them and their uh, collective voices to make a real difference. Well I first of all wanted to make it because of Katherine Graham because Liz Hanna wrote an amazing portraiture of, of Kay Graham 
and uh, the, the, the struggle for her to find her own voice, even though she was already the publisher of the, of the Washington Post. And I thought that was a tremendous story. But on top of that, the relationship, the sometimes contentious, but always very kind of friendly and, and almost sibling relationship that Bradley and Graham had together. And that was fuel for all of us. We all responded to that. Then the story also takes, um, takes us on a journey, even though it happened in 1971, where Nixon was trying to, through the courts, stop the free presses literally trying to grind the, pre the free press to a halt because he did not agree with their findings or the Pentagon Papers findings and did not want anybody to see them and the Post and the, starting with the New York Times was already on their way to publishing these papers and that whole broadside assault on the news media is something that, uh, gee I wonder is that happening again today? You know, yeah it is. Mira and Tom were always going to play uh, Bradley and, and Graham, always. She approaches the job just like everybody else does, a little nervous, wondering how we're going to make it work, uh, going over the scenes, trying to ring out some other meeting or some other undiscovered beat that is uh, from the text, and to sit there uh, on the set with her for about 40 minutes and talk about what we're going to try to do once the cameras are up. Uh, that's, that's, uh, there's no better way of working, and even though she does it like everybody else does, she does it unlike anybody yeah. else can. She's the greatest that ever existed. That's the perfect way to put it. There are people out there who view their profession and their craft as um, the ones who are meant to find the truth. That's what the American press has been. There's always, there's always been uh, scallywags out there that aren't so satisfied with it. But those that are realize it's the cornerstone of our democracy. Without a freedom of the press and the freedom of speech, we're not the United States of America. Uh, and it's one thing to say you can't believe everything that you read in the paper. That's true. But there are also some things you absolutely must believe because uh, it's carved in stone and it is the honest to God what went down. And if we start discounting every, uh, uh, every, every uh, outlet that, uh, that puts out the truth, then, then we're, running into, uh, uh, we're, running, we're running the risk of losing uh, this very fragile thing that we call democracy. You know, democracy can, uh, can always be found in, uh, in retreat when it's under attack. And the truth, the, the truth takes that on.